Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to, uh, you know, we can never say welcome enough. So we want to welcome those of you who are visiting our church for the very first time. Uh, especially over here, there are many of you who came because of your friends or your relatives' baptism. Can we welcome them once again, FCBC? They are our special friends. Welcome to our church. And even over there at Suntech, we want to warmly welcome you. And, uh, you know, we just want to pray that this morning, your whole experience here in church will be a great one. I know that for some of you, when you come to church, uh, it's a very strange experience. You know, the singing songs, etc., etc. And now, you're going to hear the preaching for God's Word. But we want to uh, just uh, encourage you, you know, to join us in this time. And any questions that you may have about our church, about our faith, do talk to your friends who brought you to church. Amen? Are you happy to be in the house, in the house of the Lord this morning, church? Make some noise. I always love the Sunday morning crowd. Very enthusiastic. And you all sound like you're 16 years old only. <laughs> Well, it's great to be bringing God's Word uh, to all of us this morning. And you know, we're coming to the end of the year and crossing into the new year. And of course, there are parties that are taking place, celebrations that are taking place. Some of us, uh, when it comes to the end of the year, we may or may not feel so good emotionally or we are going through difficult situations that uh, get us distracted. But as we come to the Christmas season, crossing to the new year, for us here in church, it's important for us to know and be reminded that this year and next year and the following year are not any other ordinary years, all right? And we must remember that together with many, many churches in Singapore, we are coming together in unity to bring about spiritual change that will bless our nation and will bless many lives of our friends and family members. And just a quick recap for us, 2018 that we are going through right now is a year of what? It's a year of prayer, right? And we, it's, a, it's an amazing year of prayer. We have had many solemn assemblies where we came together to pray. Then close to 30,000 of us gathered at National Stadium for Pray Singapore. How many of you were there? Wow, so many absentees. Uh. Okay, <laughs> many of you were there, right? And we prayed for Singapore. We blessed Singapore, you know, and, and, and it's so amazing that in this year of prayer, our, even our political transition, our political change took place, right? It was announced uh, on Friday, you know, and I think this is, these are not coincidences incidental, then the year of prayer where we made so much effort to pray for Singapore, the land that we love, the political changes were announced. And all these are the work of God hand, God's hand. So 2018 year of prayer, 2019, which is next year, is a year of proclamation, right? It's a year of proclamation. And what is the year of proclamation? The year of proclamation is a year where we want to bring good news. Everybody say, good news. How many of you love good news? Right? Good news to our friends. The good news of hope. The good news of God's love. And next year, 2019, we're going to have a, a, a year of proclamation where from the 17th to 19th of May, we're going to bring all our friends and loved ones, there's space for everyone, okay? For three days, we're going to fill the national stadium with our friends and, and bless them with good news. The good news of hope. Celebration of hope. And just in case you may not be aware... 17, 18, 19 of May, we're going to have Celebration of Hope at National Stadium. The last night, last session, okay, 7, 7 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. session on the 19th of May, Sunday night, and the next day is public holiday, so don't worry about it. That last grand finale is going to be anchored by our church, FCBC. Say woohoo! <laughs> right? It's going to be anchored by our church, and let me just give you a hint. We're going to present the magical love of God to our friends. Amen? We're going to present that to them. We're going to share about God's love in a magical way. And these are things that are happening and it's important for us to uh, remain focused and be aware that as we go through 2018, 2019, into uh, 2020, all these things are happening. And in 2020, we're going to go into a year of personal discipleship. And personal discipleship basically means we're going to take care of our friends who come to know the Lord. We're going to get them to join our spiritual family. We're going to get them to learn more about what does it mean to be a Christian, you know, what does it mean to grow in their walk with God. And in different areas of their lives, they're going to learn things that will bless them 
in their marriages, right, in their work, in parenting, so on and so forth. So the next three years are going to be exciting years for us. All right, come on, go ahead and give Jesus a big clap right now. Amen? So stay focused. Don't backslide from God. <laughs> okay, next three years, God is going to do great things for us. And this, this, you know, this morning as you came into church, uh, you receive a couple of collaterals, all right, and, and you know, and later on, I'll be doing some explaining about those things that you have received. But basically, we want to move into action. And for those of you who are friends or unaware, the last couple of weeks in our church, we have been talking about how do we become effective? Why must we share with you, our friends, the good news? Okay, And that is the context of today's sermon. So are you ready to read the Word of God together? Let's turn to John chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 35 to 51. And if you do not have a Bible with you, you can follow the Scripture on screen. And the Word of God tells us in John 1, 35, Again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Verse 40. One of the two who heard John speak followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, Hey, we have found the Messiah who is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, Jesus said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Caiaphas, which means a stone, right? The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. And Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus the Na of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Verse 46, and Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Verse 50, Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the tr fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we are just so thankful, so grateful that you have given to us your mercies and your grace and you have brought us here this morning to listen to your word. And I pray, Lord, that you cause our hearts to be open, to receive and learn from what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us about. And we want to pray for all our friends, all our visitors that are here with us this morning, over here at Touch Centre and even over there at Suntech. We pray for them that, Lord, you will just open their eyes and bless them with your love and your peace. That as they sit here and join us as our friends, they will be richly blessed by what they are hearing this morning. We thank you, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say... Amen, amen. This morning's sermon is entitled, The Power of Invitation. Turn to your friend and say to them, The Power of Invitation. You know, church friends, our God is a great inviter. And all throughout the Bible, God's message to us, human beings whom He created, is often in the form of an invitation. God says to those of us who are struggling in sin, He says to us in, in Isaiah 1.18, Come, come now, come. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Jesus said to those who are struggling and who are weighed down by the problems of this world, they are burdened by the problems of this world, Jesus says in Matthew 28, and He invites people, Come to me, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give to you rest. So our God is a God of invitation. And there are many, many more uh, verses from the Bible that speaks of God inviting us, inviting us to come to Him. And this morning's sermon, we're going to talk about invitation. Now, when you think about invitation, you know, some of us say, like very trivial or not very important kind of thing, you know. But 
think about it deeper, right? When we talk about invitation, let me ask you this question. Have you received an invitation that changed your life forever? For example, have you received a job invitation that you said yes to and it changed your life forever? I mean, if you have, right? Especially for us pastors, right? When we said yes to that job invitation, our life changed forever. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about an opportunity to work overseas, an opportunity to take up an appointment, and when you said yes to that invitation, to take up that, that opportunity, your life changed forever, right? Now, how about this? Have you received an invitation in the form of a wedding proposal? Straight Yoda, wave at me, right? Don't dare to wave. Okay. And when you said yes, to that wedding proposal, that invitation, your life changed forever. Yes? Yes. How, how come you sound so sad? Our church do, does have some uh, counselling marriage courses if you want to sign up. Okay, $9.99. No, just kidding. Right? But you think about it, yeah, our lives have been changed by invitations and it's not a small thing, right? And, 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 and different kind of, of invitations, the moment we say yes to them, it changed our life forever. And for many of us here who are sitting in church and we are Christians and we are believers, our lives change when someone who cared enough for us brought us to church, right? Brought us to cell group and gave an invitation, or because of that, we heard an invitation to receive Jesus Christ into our lives, and our lives really changed forever. Amen? Amen? Like what Pastor Kiming led us to read earlier on in the service, all things have, have, have been, have, have, are passed away, right? We become new creation. We become new people in the Lord. Amen? And are you happy that your life is changed because of Jesus? If you are, make some noise. I think you need to make more noise. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Right? And just like how people have invited us, and some of you here, you are sitting here because your friends care enough for you to invite you to come. Just as how people have invited us and our lives have changed, this morning, the Lord wants us to understand that not only has He given to us who believe in Him a life-changing uh, invitation, but this responsibility of us inviting somebody else and somebody else and somebody else is a trusted responsibility that He has given to us. Now listen carefully to me, church. We are God's channel of invitation. We are God's channel to invite people to follow Jesus. One simple invitation can powerfully change another person's life for Ever, right? One simple invitation can powerfully change a person's life forever. And we are God's channel to do that. And our lives have changed because someone cared enough for us, someone loved us enough to say, hey, I got to invite you to come. I got to invite you to join me. I got to invite you to come to my cell group. I got to invite you to come to my church, FCBC. Amen. And our lives are changed because someone cared enough to invite us. And when it comes to this whole aspect of us inviting friends and sharing the good news with our friends and bringing them to know about, more about God, I learned an important truth which can be summarized in this quote. Okay, listen to this. Many believers would like to be bold about witnessing for Christ, but there's often a disconnect between aspiration and action. Many Christians are aspirational witnesses, always just feeling good about wanting to share Christ or to invite people to follow Jesus. What does this mean? You know, every, all of us sitting in church, if the pastor would say, hey, do you want to share more about Jesus? Yes. You want to do it? Yes. Yes. All right. Have you done it? Ugh. Okay, and everyone look, look to the ground because there are a lot of dead cockroaches. Okay. Right. We are aspirational. That means, but we may do. I'm speaking in Chinese. Aspirational. I want to do, I want to do, but I'm not doing. The aspiration does not become action. It's not changed into action. 
And in working with many good-hearted Christians, and, and I'm not talking about those who are rebellious, etc., etc. You know, if they are rebellious, they don't want to do, uh, Hokkien got one term for it, tong lang bui tiao lah, okay? Uh, you can't move them at all, okay? But those who want to do, those who want to take action, oftentimes it's not because they do not want to do, it's because they are not sure how to do. Right? And, and that's why they can't move from aspiration to action. And, and really, oftentimes, what we need are some simple principles and some tools to help us. Amen? Do you agree? Do you agree? Yes? And this morning, I'm going to share with you some simple truths, some simple principles that we can use. And we're going to answer this question, how can we effectively invite people to follow Jesus? How can we e- effectively invite people to follow Jesus. You know, this morning's sermon is a bit qi kuai. It's a bit strange because we have many visitors here and many friends here. So, friends who have come to church this morning, you are blessed because you are going to know the secret recipe of Christians to invite you. Very confusing, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, later if you are a visitor, just can drink one yaokun, you'll be all right. Okay, <laughs> but we're going to talk about that and later I'm going to share with you what is the relevance to you. Okay, how do, can we invite effectively invite people to follow Jesus. And I want to assure you, if you are a visitor here, we are not a cult group. We're not going to do anything to you. We're not going to draw your blood. Okay, we're not going to do anything to you. We, we are learning together how we can be a blessing to you, how we can effectively connect with people who do not know Jesus. Okay, so how can we effectively invite people to follow Jesus, the power of invitation? Firstly, to do that, we need to be personal because everyone is special. Can you turn to your friend and say to them, you are special. If it's a guy or a girl that you like, say to them, you are special. Okay? If it's your wife or your husband and you quarrel this morning, you better say you are special. Okay? You see, the church really helps you, okay? Be personal, everyone is special. And in the verse that we just read in John 1, we see Jesus doing that. Being very personal, being uh, personal and treating everyone as special. He's a great inviter in action. Now, how did Jesus invite people to join him? He could, he, he's, he's the son of God, right? He could have used angels. All right, angels. Hey, everybody, I'm Jesus Christ, you know. I don't know whether it sounds like that. Okay, come and follow me. I mean, that would have worked because like, oh, angels say already, better follow, we'll see now, right? But he didn't do that. Uh, Jesus didn't, uh, uh, you know, pay for some advertisements in Jerusalem times and say, hey, I'm Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you better come follow me. He didn't do that. Jesus didn't ask angels, Jesus didn't publish in Jerusalem times. What did he do? He basically did what every human being is able to do what every human being would do. He personally invited people to follow him. Look at some of the words that Jesus used. He says, hey, what do you seek? What do you seek? And this is basically in a very human and personal way saying to someone, hey, um, what, what are you looking for? You know, is there something in your life that you feel concerned about? Is there something you're going through in your life that is difficult? What are you seeking? It's a very personal thing. Okay, he did not say, "Yeah, you're going through all these troubles in life because you don't know me. Go to hell." No, he didn't say that, right? Say, what? Why are you seeking? Like, talk to me. Talk to me. Right? He was personal. He was personal and personable. Then he says, "Hey, come, come and see. Come and see. What? Why are you seeking? What are you concerned about? Then come and see. And come and see. Basically, is, hey, uh, take a look, lah. You know, come and have a look. Uh, maybe let me show you. Maybe let me uh, present to you or share with you. Come and see." Right? Why are you seeking? Come and see. And then he says this, follow me, follow me, right? Come along with me. Let me bring you, let me show you, right? Hey, where's the best chakwe tiao in Parkway? Hey, follow me, follow me. I'll show you, right? Very personal kind of thing. Hey, where's the best deal uh, to buy sale items, you know? Uh, and this last few days, it will be Robinson. Follow me, follow me. Go and queue up. Uh, uh, sleep on the floor from 3 a.m. onwards. Okay, follow me, right? And by the way, um, follow me is also the brand of a shampoo. All right, so that's what Jesus uses. No, just kidding. Okay, follow me, follow me. It's so very, very personal. And everyone is special, everyone is unique. And he would not look at someone and say, Why are you so gong? Why are you so silly? Why are you so dull? How come you ask me questions that, that are like ridiculous? Don't you know I'm the son? No, no, he never did that. 
And just listen to me. If, if, if you are someone who has not um, received Jesus into your life, this is Jesus. Very, very normal person, okay? You don't have to be frightened of him, okay? He's not going to send angels and speak to you in the middle, middle of the night. Ki lai, ki lai. No, talk to you. He's not. He will just come to you or maybe through your friend and say, hey, what are you seeking? Follow me. Let me speak to you, right? And very, very personal because every person is special. Now, listen to me. This is good, okay? It's good. Free of charge, all right? He went one step even further. Where do we see, see this? In John 1, 38 to 39, it tells us, Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now listen to this. This is incredible. The, guys, the two guys were seeking for truth or seeking for some answers in their life. right? And Jesus asked them, where do you seek? And these two guys, uh, not only Jesus knows how to invite, they also know how to self-invite. Hey, Jesus, the Kyatolo, right? Where are you staying? Where do you live? Okay, very thick skin, uh, this why these two guys, all right? Chinese say, put, put, right? Try to, uh, try to find out where he's staying. Now, most of us, when a stranger comes up to you and asks you, where do you live? You will tell them, um, I'm not going home yet. Right, give some excuse. Uh, where do you live? Uh, somewhere between Jurong and Tampanese, all right? Uh, somewhere there, lah, okay? But Jesus said, what did Jesus say? He said, come lah. Come to my house and have a look. Come to my place and have a look. There is Jesus. Okay, he's the son of God. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Yeah, he said to these two men, hey, come. Come and see for yourself where do I live? Jesus invited them into his personal and private space. You know how special that makes people feel? And that is Jesus, right? That is Jesus. Imagine you meet the president and, and, and you know, sometimes children like to ask the president, hey, where do you live? And the president says, hey, why don't you come and take a look? Wow, very special, right? Now listen, the Lord is teaching us a principle here. And this principle is this, listen. When we allow people to come into our world, they will open up their world and their lives to us. Amen. And listen to me. If you have, do not know Jesus Christ. Jesus opens His life to you. He shares His life to you. In fact, He gave His life for you so that He can bring you and whatever you're struggling in your world, and He can come into your world to help you to walk with you. You see, make people feel special, wanted, and accepted. And we can do this by opening up our lives to them. Church, this is what we need to do. If we want to be in effective in inviting people, we need to do that. Now, some of us say, uh, maybe I'm not ready to invite them to our home, but I don't mind having a meal with my friend. Go ahead and do it. I don't mind spending time with my friend, you know, just hanging out. Please go ahead and do it. Listen to me. And now I'm going to speak on behalf of people who do not know Jesus, okay? Many of our friends actually will know and they can feel whether we are sincere or not when we invite them, right? Some of our friends already know, right? they can see right through already. This fella, this Christian, only invite me to church three times a year. Good Friday, Easter and Christmas. And I know why. He need to meet Kota. Okay? <laughs> he need to, his, his leaders tell him, you got to bring friend on me to meet Kota. No. People can feel that. People can feel that. Don't do that. Be personal. Make people feel special. Make people feel special. You know, I have this friend, his name is Joseph Chen, and he's the director of YWAM, which is a missions agency. And, and he's a missions agency, you know, in Asia, do a lot of missions work all over the nations. But his wife and him, uh, he, he shared with me about his wife and him doing something that really inspired my wife and I and my family. Basically, a few times a year during the public holidays, what Joseph and his family would do is that they would invite um, migrant workers who clean their blocks, okay, uh, housing estate. And, and we know that uh, many of those who clean our housing estates, they are migrant workers. They would invite these migrant workers during public holiday to come to their house and to have cook them a meal, 
okay? And cook them a meal, not to now, nah, yeah, okay? But cook them a meal and eat with them together with the children. The children must be around, the whole family must be around. One or two of these migrant workers bring them and s- sit there and eat with them. Now listen, that is so powerful, right? That really makes people feel very, very special, right? And I, and I feel so inspired by him. When I, when I heard this story, I said, well, I must, I must try and do that. So now I'm checking out who are the migrant workers who clean my block. Make sure I got the correct one. Uh. Don't care about other block. No, just kidding. Okay, <laughs> find the right person and invite them to my house uh, to eat a meal. All right? And that's why my wife has been practicing her curry cooking skills. Okay, should be all right already. Should be all right. We'll be ready soon, right? So, but, <laughs> but make people feel special. Okay, so can you turn to your friend and say to them, be personal, make people feel special. And those of you who are visitors, where are the visitors? Wave at me. Okay, those of you who are visitors, today's sermon, you can, you can tell your friend and brought you to church. There, your pastor say, make me feel special. After this service, you must bring me to Roland Restaurant, which is also the pastor's restaurant. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. It's not my restaurant. But you, come on, go ahead and clap to Jesus, okay? You, you have a right, friends, you have a right today to ask your Christian friend to make you feel special, all right? And some of us say, wow, weirdly, radically, wow, this kind of thing, very radical. Only Christian that maybe 30 years as Christian, then they can do. No, 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 no. This is not radical or weird. This is the simple Jesus way. It is the Jesus way. Having a meal with a migrant worker, having, inviting someone to your home, and getting to know them, spending time with them, making them feel special, is the Jesus way. Everybody say, Jesus way. Right? It's the Jesus way. And maybe today you come to church, you have no clue about Jesus, or has all these things, you know. Uh, let me tell you, He is very real. He is very down to earth. He is very, very simple. And He loves you, and He wants to make you feel special, right? Now, so Jesus did that. And, and what we see here is that when Jesus was like that, He, was, he came as the Son of God, what Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, Tuan no big thing, Jesus Christ. And, but yet, when the, when the people around Him saw Him just being so human and just inviting others in a sincere and personal way, what happened was it caught on. The guys that were being invited caught on and they ag- actually did the same thing for others, okay? So in John 1 verses 40 to 42, it says, one of the two who heard John speak followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, right? Jesus, uh, uh, Andrew was following Jesus. And when he saw Jesus saying, follow me, come to me, come and see, what did, and, uh, what did Andrew do? He went to find his own brother Simon, and said to him, hey, we have found the Messiah. And he brought his brother, come on, bro. Okay, he brought the brother to Jesus. He caught on and said, hey, something about Jesus, no? He's so amazing. He asked us to follow him. He asked us to come to him. He asked us to go to his house and take a look. Come on, bro. You got to come with me. You got to see this Jesus. So that happened, right? You got it? Right? It, it, it passed on. It caught on. Then in John 1.43, it talks about Philip. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So Jesus says to Philip, follow me. And Philip said, wow, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, asked me to follow him. And what did he do? He went to find Nathanael, right? And told Nathanael about Jesus. And, and he went to, he found Nathanael and said to him, hey, we found this man, Jesus Christ, whom, whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote about Jesus, the son of Nazareth. Philip told Nathanael about Jesus, okay? And, and wanted to bring Nathanael to Jesus. Now, what do you see here? When we are effective in inviting people to Christ, a multiplying effect happens through the power of personal invitations. Amen. There's a multiplying effect. And in our church, we do hear reports of cell groups that are already in this multiplying effect. Oh, how week after week, people are inviting and their friends are inviting the friends who are inviting the friends who are inviting. There's a multiplying effect. Now listen to me. Andrew brought Peter, Philip brought Nathaniel, and it's, it, is so imp- it was so important. You know why? Because if Andrew 
did not bring his bro, Peter, to Jesus, there would not have been the Apostle Peter, right? And the Apostle Peter in the book of Acts, in, in, the, in the history of the church, preached, to tr- preached and 3,000 people received Jesus Christ. 3,000 people. All because his brother Andrew brought him to Christ. Now that is the power of one simple invitation, right? And Peter brought 3,000 people to Christ. And what, and, and what, about what happened? Peter became the leader, the early leader, the apostle of the church. Now what about Nathaniel? Philip went to find Nathaniel. And Nathaniel received a word from Jesus that he will see great revelation. Now Nathaniel is very important because in church history, Nathaniel was the one who carried a translation of the Gospel of Matthew to northern India. And the people in northern India received the Word of God because one guy by the name of Philip went to invite Nathaniel and brought him to Jesus. One guy by the name of Andrew brought Peter to follow Jesus and the, the impact and the effect was incredible. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a big clap of praise. Amen. Oh, you want to clap, clap louder, okay? Amen. And, I, and we can tell you, I can tell you, there are pastors here, there are leaders here who are making impact in this nation, in the nations of the earth, because somebody, somebody invited and brought them to the Lord. Great things can happen, okay? Now, you have in your hand this Christmas card, right? And this Christmas card, you know, uh, each person has three pieces. Basically, what this is for you to do, you see a lot of blank space inside. This is for you to write something to, to your friend to connect with them, okay? Long lost um, friend that you have not connected with for a long time. You just want to write something to connect with them. Hey, say hi to them. Ask them how they are doing. Now, ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, please don't write. Lah. Okay, later your wife slap you. Okay, uh, But write to friends okay, and connect with them. Right? Connect with them and just find out how they are doing. And please don't, don't post it, but text your friend and say, hey, can I, can I meet up with you? Can I have a drink with you? And say, hey, you know, I, want to, I want to give to you this Christmas card. You know? And in our world today, uh, it's all ele- electronic, right? Birthday cake also electronic, right? Uh, nowadays we celebrate birthdays in our in our cell group. Don't need to buy candle because they got this electronic candle using the handphone, right? But nothing is more personal than writing a card and something sincere from your heart, you know. And sometimes people say, "Ah, yeah, this invitation thing, you know, writing this thing really so important, man." Listen to me, okay? Invitation or a card that you write is not a small thing because an invitation that you write could rewrite your friend's destiny. Because this thing that you write to your friend, this thing that you write to invite your friend, whether it's a card or something that you write, can rewrite someone's destiny. And I love our baptism services because every time you watch this video, Behind all these stories are people who have done something to reach out, to invite these persons that you see on the video to church or to cell group. And their lives and their destiny are forever changed. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a big clap of praise. Amen? Okay? So, go and write something. How can we effectively invite people to follow Jesus. Number one, to effectively invite people to follow Jesus, we need to be personal because everyone is special. Now, we're not just talking about people who do not know Jesus, okay? So, can you turn to the person on your left and right and say to them, eyeball to eyeball, nostril to nostril, okay? You are special, but can you really say with sincerity that you are special, okay? And if your friends are sitting behind you, turn to them and say to them, you are special. I'm going to give you 10 seconds so that you can do it properly. One, two, three, go. Yeah, well done. Okay, sermon finished. You can go home, Ray. Right? But nobody told me I'm special. 
One, two, three, just say you're special. One, two, three, you're special. Okay. <laughs> Somebody, someone out there say, well, Pastor Roland, your skin very thick. Uh, very, very thick. Okay. Uh, you know, I just like the kid around. Okay, so be personal. Everyone is special. Number two, not only must we be personal, we need to be purposeful. Purposeful. Everyone is caught. Is caught. Now listen to me carefully. What, what do I mean by that? You know, when you think about inviting people, our friends, to know Jesus and to follow Jesus, it's not just bringing people to an event. Wow, oh, come and watch this concert. Come and attend this. Come and attend that. Okay, sometimes they can attend. Sometimes they cannot attend. Now, don't get me wrong. Inviting people to church, to a program, to a concert or a harvest event is great. They need it. And many, many people come to know Jesus through all those things. But listen to me. God's purpose for us and God's purpose for our friends is not to just attend events. God's purpose for us and our friends is that they come and they experience God through His spiritual family. Amen? How many of you here, you belong to God's spiritual family? Make some noise. Right? Now, God wants people to experience His love through us, His spiritual family, right? Through real human beings. You see, God's community, and that is us, our cell groups, that demonstrates true love, authenticates the Christian message. When people come and join us and be part of us, and join our spiritual family, they see that we are real and they experience God's love in a powerful way. In Acts 2, 45 to 47, the Bible tells us in Acts, they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes, right? The community, the cell, for the Lord's Supper, they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Shared their meals. Sounds like Singaporean, right? All the while, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship. Fellowship basic, basically means people coming together, getting to know each other, friendship, fellowship to those who are being saved. And you know, that was what Jesus was actually doing. He caught Andrew, he caught Philip, he caught Nathaniel. And we know that he was actually calling 12 men, calling 12 men together to form a community, to form a group where for the next three years, he's going to live with them, he's going to walk with them, he's going to go through life with them so that he can teach them about God and the ways of God. He's, going to, he's discipling them about the kingdom. He's discipling them about life. He's teaching them in a community. And it, when Jesus called people into the community, into God's spiritual family, what is very important is this, and don't miss this. Anyone can be invited and called to follow Jesus, to be His disciple, regardless of social or spiritual status. Church, we need to remember that. Anyone can be called into the spiritual community. Anyone can be called into the spiritual family. Jesus didn't look at Andrew and say, oh, this one is so, so ugly, you don't want. Okay? Or, or, or Nathaniel, ah, this guy, ah, you're too chim ready, lah, too intellectual, don't want. Got PhD, permanent head damage, ah, don't want. Okay? Oh, he didn't. Anyone. In fact, many of those that Jesus called into the spiritual community of 12 people, many of them actually don't qualify from social status or even spiritual status point of view. And if you are someone who do not know Jesus Christ, I want, I want you to know that, okay? Because many people out there have this wrong mentality that Christianity is for the rich, Christ, uh, Christianity is for the intellectual, Christianity, uh, Jesus only accepts those with uh, university degree and above. It's not true at all. There are no social status or spiritual status high or low that will cause Jesus to reject from bringing people into the community. And here's the application for us, FCBC, okay? Our cell groups, our open cells must exist for pre-believers, regardless of social status or spiritual status, to disciple them and to, to know and to believe in Jesus so that they can become committed disciples and in turn do the same for others. Now listen to Pastor Roland very carefully. And we have heard this for a number of times uh, throughout this year on our pulpit. Many of ourselves have built four walls. Okay? And many of our cell groups, this spiritual community has become just 
a cosy place for Christians to gather week after week. And we don't have friends who are not Christians coming to join us. And, and, we, and it's like that for a long time. Now listen, if your cell group, if your open cell group have not had pre-believing friends for a long, long time, listen, then this cell group has lost its purpose. Why is it called an open cell? It's called an open cell because it's open for everybody to come to attend, right? And as an immediate application, some of you right now today, you can actually invite your friend whom you brought to church and say, hey, this week, would you like to come to my cell group? Would you like to come and join us? And a cell group is really a spiritual community for people to come to know about God. Amen? So, this is one important change and one important purpose that all of us ourselves, our cell groups need to come back to. Every open cell must have purposeful programs throughout the year to disciple pre-believers to know and to follow Jesus. Right? And I can tell you, many people, if you throw them into a program, you throw them into a conference, you throw them to attend an event, it is good, but usually it is not sufficient to help them to know more about God. But when they come into a community, they will know more about God because they see God through our lives. Amen? Turn to your friend and say, people will see God through our lives. Right? And I remember I was leading a cell group uh, many years back as a cell leader. There was this, this guy who, who came every week, but he, he wasn't a believer, but he just joined us every week. He sang the songs that we sang. He read the Bible. He just came every week, every week. You know, and, and, he, and, he, and he, didn't, he didn't want to receive Jesus, but he just came and enjoyed the fellowship. And after uh, several weeks, I said, hey, maybe I should just ask him, you know, since he comes so many weeks away. So I asked this guy, hey, you have come so many weeks already. Uh, today, do you think it is time for you to ask Jesus to come into your life and you follow him? He said, yeah. I say, yeah, no questions. Uh. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> say, okay, uh, then do you want to pray to ask Jesus to come to your life right now? He said, yeah, okay. No questions, uh. no questions. Uh, why? Uh? Uh, because these last few weeks I've seen what it means to be a Christian really. And I see it's a great thing. It can change my life. It changes me. And he prayed with me and immediately became our, the, the cell member of the, of the church. Amen? Come on, go ahead and thank Jesus, okay? So it's like that. And listen, I'm just going to give you, just very briefly, so we're going we're gonna to get our, our cell groups, okay, to run purposeful programs throughout the year. And one big one that is coming up, I'm just going to share with you uh, quickly, is is this. All of us are going to be trained in a program that brings people and helps people to know more about the Lord called Sing Fu Xiao Zu. All right? Sing Fu Xiao Zu. Okay? Sing Fu Xiao Zu. Ah. Don't pronounce as Sing Fu Xiao Zu. Okay? Very different. Sing Fu Xiao Zu, right? And Sing Fu Xiao Zu, in English, we are doing some survey and apparently when we ask people, Christians out there, you know, sometimes we are Christian too spiritual. Wow, we say, uh, want to call it life group or not, or care group or not. They say, or uh, what do you think? And the, the people out there actually say, happiness group sounds good. Okay, not happy group. Happy group is too shallow for people who don't, don't even believe in Jesus. But they say happiness group is good. They want true happiness. So, Sing Fu Xiao Zu is what we're all going to be trained in. And very basic. And, and if, if you're not yet a Christian, we want to, we want to tell you and want to announce to you, when we launch all these Sing Fu Xiao Zu, please come and join us. Okay? Uh, you brought friends, you better grab them, okay? <laughs> Please come and join us because for 14 weeks, this thing for sales how they run is like for, for 14 weeks, we will get our friends to come and in an environment of, uh, of, of, of sharing, in an environment of fun, uh, food fun, fellowship, getting to know each other, friendship, we're going to help our friends to know more about Jesus. And we're going to help our friends know more about Jesus in a way that they can understand. The problem with us is that sometimes we, people don't understand about Jesus because we, the way we do it, they cannot understand what we are saying. We are like, 你们在讲什么? Okay? <laughs> you are saying things in terms that people cannot understand. 14 weeks, we're going to do that. And then after that 14 weeks, we're going to bring our friends to church services, etc. so that they can come to know the Lord. Alright? Now, your team pastors are going to tell you when the training will take place. Okay, but essentially, we're going to launch all these groups after Chinese New Year. 
right? After Chinese New Year, 大家都很幸福啦. Okay, we'll be very blessed, right? And, and we're going to launch those groups. And after that 14 weeks, it ends just nice May, the period of May 17 to 19, where we'll bring our friends all there. Okay, can you turn to your friend that's around you and say to them, join my Sing Fu Xiao Zu, join mine. Okay, tell them that. Join my Sing Fu Xiao Zu, join my group. Okay, and, and we have seen... Uh, this whole program, we are learning from uh, the Taiwanese and they are, they are blessed. Uh, yeah, they just have the, the, the results of their uh, midterm elections. They are blessed. And hundreds and thousands of people have come to know the Lord. It has spread from China to diff- uh, from Taiwan to different parts of the world and they are richly, richly blessed. And, and listen, people who attend Sing Fu Xiao Tzu in, in Taiwan, all these groups, they don't just believe in Jesus they believe in Jesus and they get baptized as part of their commitment. So they have so many baptisms there. Okay? Monday baptism, Tuesday baptism, Wednesday baptism. You know, I really pity that church for their water bill. Okay? Uh, <laughs> every day there's baptism because people are just coming to know the Lord. Right? All because of joining all these purposeful small groups. Okay? And that is going to happen. And, and some of, there's a group of us who attended the initial training, but next year, uh, or rather, from now to, to before Chinese New Year, all of us are going to be trained. But there's a group of us who attended, and together with my wife, we had two groups that attended the initial, tra- initial training. And I was so fired up, so excited. I'm going to show you a picture that I posted on Instagram. All right. Uh, can you see me there? Yeah, I'm the roundest one. The all-rounded one. No, I'm the oldest one. Okay. Uh, actually, no. Lah. Okay. And we were there, right? But what really impacted me was this phrase that they use, the Taiwanese pastors use to talk about Sing Fu Xiao Tzu. Right? And this phrase kept ringing in my mind, ringing in my mind, ringing in my mind. And I keep asking myself, well, how these people, Tahan, uh, throughout the year, they run two or three of these groups for 14 weeks and it's, they keep doing it, they keep doing it, they keep doing it and, and yet they are so joyful, they are so happy. Why? Because there's no price, that's the translation, we cannot pay, no sacrifice we cannot make for the eternal value of souls and reward we do not yet see. Now listen, what will keep us going and our cell groups going and all fired up and running with passion and energy and faith is that we look at our friends who come and we see that hey, their, their souls, their eternal destiny is so important. It is more important than anything else in this world, right? And while we can't see it in earthly terms, Yet we know in spiritual and heavenly terms that, the, that there are souls, there are lives, and the lives of our, the souls and the lives of our loved ones are so precious. And if you are not a Christian, I want you to know that. That is how important you are to God. In fact, today, if you are a visitor, I want you to know, today's whole sermon is about you, you know. It's about how we should be helping you to follow Jesus. Because your soul is of eternal value. Amen? You are very, very important to God. Amen? So, I want to encourage all of us, get ready, get ourselves involved, all right? And, and we're going to go into this. Now, very quickly, I just want to mention to you that all across the churches in, in Singapore, something purposeful is happening and something similar is happening. So, very quickly, can you bring out this? Okay, I'm going to explain in a, in a few minutes. Okay, can you wave at me? Don't throw on the floor. No littering in church. God is watching you. Okay. So very quickly, you have first this brochure, right? And this brochure, if you open it up, if you open it up, it gives you the big picture of what I mentioned at the start of the sermon. Celebration of hope. Where are the prayer centres? What are the sessions uh, under gather? What are the sessions at the National Stadium? And remember the last session on 19th of May, 7.30 p.m., is anchored by FCBC, all right? And, but you can bring friends to other sessions uh, in, the, in addition to that, all right? Then if you want to go and join in prayer, all the prayer centres, including FCBC, uh, as a regional centre, is given to you there, okay? Now, do you see this part, hope is? This hope is, is to help us initiate conversations. So you can, you can just hold this card 
and go to your friend in office and say, don't disturb people while they are working. Lah, huh? Maybe free time, just say, hey, I want, I want to ask you a question, okay? Uh, what do you think hope is fill in the blank? And your friend say, uh, hope is pay rise, law. <laughs> hope is promotion, law. <laughs> okay? Uh, maybe some of them are more uh, uh, deeper. They say, uh, hope is uh, having a, a good marriage, law. Hope is that my children turn out well. Uh, hope is that I will have good health instead of ill health. So people have many, many answers. And we initiate conversations. And from there, we, we tell them, yeah, you know, these are important things, you know, but hope is more than all these things. And, and it's not just what hope is, but it's who is the one that can truly give us hope. And you tell our friends, do you want to know, do you want to hear about it? You know, and you invite them to the celebration of hope, okay? That's why it's called celebration of hope, all right? So you use that. Then very quickly, you have this card, right? You have this card? Okay, this card has says the Andrew Initiative. Now, what is the Andrew Initiative? Actually, the Andrew Initiative is everything that I have preached so far to you. Okay, and it has the same verse. Andrew brought his brother Simon Peter to Jesus. He, he brought his... Uh, the Andrew Initiative is really about inviting and bringing people to Jesus. If you turn this card around, okay, there are up to five names that you can write there, name of your friends that you can write there, and for every of these names, you need to do three things. Number one, pray for your friend every day. All right? And we have some of our friends here, visitors here who, who are not yet Christians. We want to say to you, we, want, we will pray for you every day. So pray for those five names every day. Warfare, prayer, intercede for them, intercede for their family, for their health, for their, for their loved ones. Then engage. How do we engage our friends? And I've already shared. We care for them. We share with them. We bless them. Right? And we do all that. And the churches in Singapore, they are, going to, they are also going to start small groups to engage people so that they can help people to know more about Jesus. So some of these churches are going to do alpha groups or other kind of groups. For us, we're going to train ourselves to do Sing Fu Xiao Tzu. Now, if you think you want to do alpha groups or uh, some other uh, uh, um, methods, all right, that you think will be useful for your office, etc. Talk to your team pastors, let them know so that they can guide you and consult with you on that. Okay? And then gathering means to bring friends to National Stadium. Amen? Right? And that is uh, what this Andrew Initiative is all about. And, and when we talk about gathering, that day the Lord gave me an idea. <laughs> okay? And this idea is called BUS. B U S. All right? And the Lord says, hey, can you challenge every cell group, every cell leader to fill up <clears throat> at least one bus load? Okay, and the, the largest sit seater bus in Singapore is 44 seater. Fill up one bus load, not with your own cell members, okay? <laughs> but fill up one bus load of friends and bring them to celebration of hope. Bus, B-U-S, bring until they are saved. Sounds good, right? Sounds cool, right? Okay, if I were you, I'll start a bus company immediately. Okay, a lot of business to do. But bus, okay, and, and, and how many of you are cell leaders here? Wave, wave at me, all right? Think, dream, and say, how am I going to bring people, bring until safe, bring them on the bus, all right? And great things are going, to hap are going to happen. So how do we effectively invite people to follow Jesus? Number one, be personal because everyone is special. Number two, be purposeful because everyone is caught. And I want to say this to you friends who are visitors with us. Okay? And someone told me, wow, this weekend's sermon is very strange. No, we, we let our friends know our, our methodology. I say, great. Why? Because our friends know that we are serious about them and their souls and their eternal future is so important to us. And I want, to, I want to say something. If you have suggestions, you're not a Christian, but you have suggestions how we can help you to know more about Jesus, can you tell us? Okay? Tell us and share with your friends who brought you to church and say, hey, here are some other suggestions, no? Uh, maybe you have a buffet every week, you know, we'll come. Okay, I don't know. Like, just share with them. Tell us how we can help you know more about Jesus. All right? Praise God. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a big clap of praise. Wow. I want to close reading a testimony from a young lady from my team. And I want to encourage you with a testimony and then we'll close our service. And this 
the musicians can come and join me. And this girl, her name is Siobhan, and she's only 18 years old, 十八岁, 18 years old, okay? And her name is Siobhan, and this is what she wrote. Hi, my name is Siobhan, and I'm 18 years old. I always look for opportunities and open doors to bring people to church because I want others to experience the same love that I have received and find hope and strength in God. So when I was in secondary school, I would pray for open doors to preach to my friends and the opportunity came when I was in secondary four. Every month, okay, she says, my class will be changing seating arrangements. I don't know what kind of school is that. How come keep changing? <laughs> okay. And I got swapped or swapped to sit with this classmate whom I taught already had a church she's actively going to. However, when we chatted and came to the topic about churches, she shared with me that she hasn't been going to church due to conflicts with people there and has been searching for one. I invited her to Teens Excite service with me where she then rededicated her life and has been my cell sister till now. Being encouraged by that, Siobhan says, I continue praying and seeking for open doors and opportunities to share Christ with others. After that, our seating arrangement changed again. And I sat with another girl whom I assume won't be open to Christianity or Jesus. But we talk about church. And this girl shared with me that her family stopped attending church since she was primary six. But this girl, deep down inside her, she always wanted to go back to church and crave for a relationship with God. So Siobhan asked this girl, hey, are you open to coming to church with me? And, I, and she invited, and Siobhan invited her to the cell group Christmas party. And thereafter, at the, at the service, this girl, who has missed church for a long time, dedicated her life to Christ and is my cell sister till now too. Okay, so those of you who are teachers, very important. Keep switching sitting arrangement to help people come to know the Lord, okay? Now, that's not the end. Ever since I accepted Christ, I always wanted to bring my family, except my, especially my parents, to Christ. I was the first person in my family to become a Christian, and many of my family members were of another faith. I was discouraged many times due to the backlash I received from my family members, and some of them keep telling me, hey, you are brainwashed in church. You are brainwashed by your church. And many of them keep saying, church is only very good at collecting money from people. Ayo. Asking for permission for my baptism was a struggle too, as my parents didn't understand why I wanted to get baptised so soon and insisted I wasn't ready for it. After constantly praying and sharing my reason with them, my parents finally signed the baptism form and I invited my family members to come and witness my baptism. Hoping their lives would be changed during my baptism service, I prayed very hard during the days that led to the, my baptism that my family would come and accept Jesus Christ. However, that didn't happen and I have to admit that I was slightly discouraged. But that didn't stop me from praying and preaching the gospel. I looked for opportunities to share with them about how God really changed my life and the way I see life too. And I keep inviting them to events, special services like Mid Autumn Festival, etc. A few months ago, my family went through a crisis and my grandmother got ho hospitalized. Things were pretty rough in our family. But because of that, my parents were open to bringing my grandparents to church. So I invited them to come for service and I prayed constantly that they will come to know the Lord through the services. And even though they didn't immediately receive Christ on the first service, I continued praying for their salvation. Now listen to this. Today, both my parents and grandparents have accepted Jesus Christ into their lives. And seeing their lives transform is indeed very encouraging for me. Now I'm praying together with them for the salvation of my brother and my other family members. I have learned, this 18-year-old girl says, I have learned that with faith as small as a mustard seed, as long as I keep sowing seeds, caring, praying for people around me, faithfully inviting and preaching the gospel, I will see the harvest of these souls entering the kingdom of God. Come on, let's go ahead and give Jesus a big clap of praise. Amen. Oh, you want to clap, clap louder. 
you know, the story of this young girl really moved me, right? 18 years old. And because she was persistent to invite and to invite and to invite, and she does not want to give up the whole destiny of her family, the destiny of her two friends in school that came to know the Lord forever changed because she believed that Jesus is the answer that everybody needs for their lives. And church, I want to, sh- I want to say this to us. Today, God wants to change our hearts. You know, when we talk about inviting friends to church or to our cell group, many of us feel very burdened, very stressed. Maybe some of you sit here today and you say, wow, I wish I didn't come to church today. Alamak, Pastor Roland preached about this again. Very stressful, very burdened. You know, ah, you know. But today, God wants to change our hearts and, and, and tell us this. You know, when we give invitations, whether it's invitations to our birthday party, whether it's invitations to our wedding, whether invitations to a, a great concert or event, giving your friends free tickets, free invitation, it is supposed to be a happy and joyful thing. And church, God is saying to us this morning, if we have been feeling stressed and burdened and we are like ah, struggling with this whole invitation thing, it is a lie from Satan. God says that He, the Father in heaven, when He looks at us and He gives His invitation to us to receive His Son, Jesus Christ, and He gives His invitation to us to, to receive and come into His spiritual family, He does it with open arms. He does it with great joy. He can't wait for us to say yes. And today, church, Jesus wants to change our hearts and say, hey, let go of that burdensome feeling. And later on, when we open up for a time of prayer, come and say, God, I want to receive the joy. Amen? The joy of inviting people because people are special. People are called by you. I'm representing God to give invitations to people who do not know Jesus. Wow, I feel proud. I feel happy doing it. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to close this service. And I can't close this service without speaking a word to many, many of our friends here in TC and over at Suntech. You have never given your life to Jesus Christ. In Revelation 3.20, the Word of God tells us, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Listen to me. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, today, this invitation from Jesus is the most important invitation that you will ever receive in your life. But Jesus loves you so much that He will never force His way into your life. He's not going to knock down the door and come right in because He loves you. And because He loves you and He respects you as a person, He respects your free will, the only person that can say yes to this invitation is you. But the Bible tells us Jesus is knocking on the door. Why is He knocking on the door? Because He knows that He knows that He knows that you need Him to come into your life. You need Him to wash you clean of your sins. You need Jesus because your marriage is coming to a place where it's just breaking up. You need Him because your children are rebellious and you do not know what to do with them. You need Him because you're going through stresses and depression and mental illness and you're struggling. You need Him because your health is failing or you receive a negative medical report and you do not know what to do. Jesus knows that you need him. And that is why he's knocking on the door of your heart and saying, would you let me come in? Would you accept my invitation? I just want to come in and sit with you in your heart and be your friend to help you, to make you my child, to make you my son, my daughter, to make you and to change you and to change your family and to do something for you that you really, really need in your life. Amen. So why don't we all just close our eyes and bow our heads right now. This is a very, very special moment. This is a moment of the most important invitation that any of us can ever receive. And this invitation, only you can say yes to it personally. 
if you have never received Jesus Christ into your life, but this morning as you sat in church, you know that you need Him. You know that there's emptiness that you feel inside of you. There's hopelessness that you feel inside of you. You, you, you may be someone successful in life or not so successful in life, yet you are fearful and you do not know who to turn to. Jesus says, I'm the one that you need. And He's inviting you to open the door of your heart and allow Him to come in. And if, and if this morning, whether over here at Touch Centre or over there at Suntec, you say, Pastor, I want to say yes to this invitation. I want to say yes to Jesus. If that is what you want to do, I'm going to help you right now. And, and, and what you need to do right now is to follow me in a prayer. You pray this prayer word for word and line by line because this prayer is designed to help us to say yes to Jesus' invitation to us this morning. So with all eyes closed, all heads bowed, nobody looking around, say this prayer together with me, word for word and line by line. And every one of us here, your spiritual family here in FCBC, we will say this prayer together with you so that you feel supported, so that you feel loved. All right, so say this prayer together with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Come on, say it 20 times louder. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I open the door of my heart to you this morning. I say yes to your invitation, Lord. I need you, Jesus, to come into my life, to wash me clean of my sins, to help me in my marriage, to help my children, Jesus, to heal me, Lord. I open the door of my life. Open the door and I say yes to you, Lord Jesus. Please come into my life this morning. Be my friend. Be my savior. Be my savior. I welcome you in. I welcome you in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With all eyes closed, all heads bowed. Nobody looking around. If you said that prayer with me, whether you said it very loudly or you said it very softly or you just whisper inside your heart, it doesn't matter. But if you said that prayer with me just now, you followed me in that prayer, I want to know who you are because I want to pray for you. I want to bless you. I want to bless your family. I want to say a prayer of blessing for you. So whether over here at Touch Centre or over there at Suntech, you will pray that prayer with me for the very first time. All eyes closed. Nobody looking around except some leaders that are on duty. If you pray that prayer with me at the count of three, I want to invite you to lift up your hands just as an indication to me, Pastor, I prayed that prayer with you. All right, can you do that right now at the count of three? One, two, three. Three. Lift up your hands and say, Pastor, I pray that prayer with you. Lift up your hands and say, Pastor, I pray with you. Over there at Suntech as well, there will be a pastor that acknowledges you. Yes, just lift up your hands and say, Pastor, I pray that prayer with you. Yes, I see your hand. Lift up your hand. Just keep it lifted for a couple of seconds. Just keep it lifted for a while. Up there as well, down here, across this place. Just lift up your hand. This is the most important decision that you will ever make. Keep your hands lifted. I see you back there. Keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Over there at Suntech, I see people lifting their hands. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these friends who have lifted up their hands. Father, we pray for them that you will bless their lives. You'll bless their homes, their families, that Lord, beginning this day, their lives will never be the same again because you love them so much. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Can I invite us to stand? You can put down your hands. And as you stand, let's clap unto the Lord. Let's thank Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now listen to Pastor Roland. I saw a number of hands going up. This is very important. Over there at Santa as well. This is very important. You are very important to us and I need your help. If you lifted up your hands or even if you did not lift up your hands but you prayed that prayer with me to invite Jesus to come into your life or maybe this week someone led you in a prayer in a cell group but you have not made a public declaration. Whatever it is, when I count to three, you know that you need to say yes to this invitation and you lifted up your hands or you did not lift up, I want to invite you to come forward to my right, which is your left. Now, FCBC, listen to me very, very carefully. Here is where your invitation is so important. If you brought a friend to church this morning, whether is it a whole group of them, whether is it one person, if you brought a friend to church this morning, when I count one, two, three, I want you to turn to your friend without forcing them turn to them and say, do you want to receive Jesus? Do you want to walk down? And if they say yes, you walk down with them. Okay? Can? Understand? 
and, and as you come down, we just want you to be here. We want to bless you. Then we're going to get a pastor to spend some time with you to help you understand what is the decision you have made, to help you understand uh, and give you some materials to read as well. Okay? So, FCBC, as they walk down, let's welcome them. And if you brought a friend to church, please invite them to come down. Even if you did not pray out loud, even if you did not lift up your hands, you know you need to come, you come right now. So here we go. One, two, three. Come on, let's invite them. Let's come right now. Make your way forward right now. If you brought a friend to church, just bring them over there at Suntech as well. There'll be a pastor to acknowledge you. There'll be a pastor to welcome you. Come on, church. Let's clap for them. Let's really, really clap for them. Let's really, really encourage them. Yeah, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Yes, turn to your friend and, and just say, if you want to come, I will come down with you. Just come, just come. Come on, keep clapping for them. And even if you're way up there, if you're way up there, you can come down. You can come down. Just make your way forward. We're going to wait a couple more seconds over there at Suntech. We see a number of people coming to receive Jesus Christ this morning. Oh, come on church, don't be tired. Keep clapping. There's rejoicing in heaven. Everyone is special. Wow, many people over at Suntech coming forward. Keep coming. As the pastor acknowledges you, keep coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to come, you still can come. It's not too late to come. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, we are just so happy for you who have come forward and over there at Suntech as well. And I want to say this to you on behalf of God, on behalf of Jesus. You are special. You are so special. And I tell you, I gave my life to Jesus when I was in primary four and my life was never the same again. And in our church, we never teach that all our problems disappear because life is never like that. But what is going to be different is that beginning today, your life will have a good friend called Jesus and you'll walk through every single journey and difficulty that you may face in life because He loves you so much and you are special. Amen. And all of us here, we are your spiritual family. Okay, so can we say hi to them? Hi, right? And over there at Santa as well, I see a no quite a number of you there. So we're going to pray for you. We're going to bless you. And then a pastor is going to lead you to a little uh, room outside where we want to spend some time with you, help you understand the decision you have made because you're so important, so special to us. So just close your eyes. If you want, you can open up your hands like receiving. And church, let's stretch our hands to them as we pray for them. So Father, we pray for all these friends who have come forward this morning. We are so happy because we know God. You are so happy. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing. They are rejoicing, God, because these friends have come to receive you. And we pray for them that you'll bless their lives, you'll bless their homes, their work, their health. And we pray that beginning this day, as they go home, they will experience your presence, they will experience your love in a special way. So as they spend time with our leaders and consolidators, we pray that they will be richly blessed with that time of friendship and connection. We bless all of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. We are proud of you. You are special. Just turn around. And over there at Suntec as well, just turn around, follow the pastor. And as they walk down the aisle, come on, go ahead and thank God for them. Yeah, come on, clap for them as they go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a couple of minutes. We're going to open for a time of ministry, but I want to give you just two or three more quotes to help us listen. The lost are waiting for an invitation. Perhaps souls are not being saved, because they are simply not invited. No one invited them. And because of that, they are not being safe. Listen, we may not be able to reach everyone, but let's believe that all of us can at least reach and invite someone to Christ. Amen? Amen. And I want to close with this. And if you can read in Chinese, you read together with me. There's no price we cannot pay no sacrifice we cannot make for the eternal value of souls and reward we do not yet see. 
this morning's ministry is going to be like that. Don't come feeling burdened. Don't come feeling guilty that you struggle with inviting people. Don't come that way. I, and when you come forward, I, I, I don't even want you to kneel down, okay? When you come forward, the ministry this morning is like that. God wants us to come and receive the joy of inviting people. Understand? Come forward and say, God, wow, I, I let go of this burden, okay? And it's not from God. Come forward and say, I want to receive that joy just like my father opening up heaven and angels celebrating. I want to have that joy in my heart when I invite people to my cell group, to my church. Now listen to me. If you are a cell leader, I want to encourage you to come forward to declare one thing. Come forward and say to the Lord, Lord, I declare for my cell group that beginning today, my cell group will exist for people who do not know Jesus. Amen. And you're going to see many people who do not know Jesus come into your cell group. And it's going to give your cell group new life. Amen. It's going to give your cell group a new spirit and a new life and a new energy. Okay. So over here at TC and over there at Suntech, if you have carried that burden and, and that burden doesn't even help you at all to invite people, come this morning and say, I received the joy of invitation. And if you are a cell leader, I want to challenge you to say, come forward to represent your cell group and say, I open the doors of my cell. I break down the four walls of my cell and I say, my cell will exist for pre-believers to come. So as Pastor Roger lead us, just come as we minister to you. Just come right now. Just come. Just come. Yeah. Come, come, come. Close your eyes and lift up your hands if no one is praying for you. Lift up your hands. I see a vision and the Lord puts in this vision into all of your hearts as you come forward. And it's a picture of how wide are the arms of God being thrown open in inviting. How wide and how open is the kingdom of God for those who do not know God, for those who do not know Jesus. That is the heart of the Father. Everyone is special. Everyone is caught to be part of the spiritual family. Everyone is special. Everyone is called and they can be blessed. Receive that vision into your heart right now. And in the name of Jesus, as you receive that vision into your heart and into your spirit, we break the dryness in our cell groups. We break the drought in our cell groups. We break the lack of visitors in our cell group. We break even the burden, the burden that we feel or the, the discouragement that we feel or even the skepticism that we feel. We break that from our lives and from our cell group. Lord, in the name of Jesus, release right now, Holy Spirit, the joy of invitation over us, the joy of the heart of the Father in inviting, in wanting people to come and welcoming people, release it over us right now so that our hearts and our spirit and our minds can change. We want to carry the heart of the Father. We want to carry the heart of Jesus the Son. We want to welcome people with open arms. We want to make people feel special and feel caught because of you. So come Holy Spirit right now. Come Holy Spirit right now. Come Holy Spirit right now. And receive that right now. And Lord, lift away the burden and replace it with joy, replace it with enthusiasm, replace it with passion, and give us that ability to look in the eyes of every single person who does not know you, and look into their eye and truly say to them from our hearts, you are special, and you are called, and you are invited to join my spiritual family. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Help us, Lord. And there's no price that we will not pay, no sacrifice that we will not make for the sake of your kingdom and for those whom you love. We thank you, Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a big, big clap of praise. Shout, Jesus! Jesus! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God bless you as you go. And next week, Bring someone, okay? Invite somebody to church. Invite somebody to sell. God bless you as you go. We'll see you again next week. Thank you.